What's up guys? Here I am to do another video game review. And today's game we're going to be talking about is House of the Dead The Return for the Nintendo Wii. And this video game is a compilation that includes House of the Dead 2 and 3. Alright, so first thing, let you know that House of the Dead is a first person shooter, rail shooter, um, originally designed for the arcade by Sega and House of the Dead 3 as well. House of the Dead 2 is pretty old. I think it was released in 1998. House of the Dead 3 uh, a couple years later. Okay, it's basically just a game where you um, <clears throat> have to fend off yourself from uh, zombies. Save. You're also saving um, people but you go through um, various environments and uh, basically just trying to kill monsters. So in that sense, it's a survival horror. But it is more like an action game because it's very, very fast-paced. Here you can see a screenshot from uh, House of the Dead 2. The uh, enemies come in great variety. You know, you have not just zombies, but you have zombies with wearing armor, zombies with knives, zombies that throw axes, zombies with giant swords, mutant frogs, leeches, all kind of crazy stuff. Mm -mm. Oh, uh, House of the Dead is a House of the Dead 2 and 3 at least are co-op games. It means you can play with uh, two players sharing screen. Now the difficulty in the game is quite a um, difference maker because it was originally designed for the arcade so therefore uh, it's expected that players would just continue as many times as they wanted by using quarters but this is not the case in the console version where you have a limited amount of uh, lives, a limited amount of continues. So uh, the chances are that you're probably going to die and have to repeat several stages. But practice makes perfect. So luckily the game is kind of short. So a couple playthroughs won't uh, take up your entire day. But the game does get progressively harder. House of the Dead 2, I think you You'll probably reach a dead end um, at about stage 3 or stage 4. Now, okay, you can be really good at aiming and really fast with a trigger, but that's not going to save you. You're still going to take damage because the game is just designed that way. It's designed to take quarters, so... Uh, it's more about memorization. Survival is based on memorization. Just knowing when and exactly where the enemies are going to pop up and the best place to shoot them is key to survival. Also, you got to remember uh, where the health and uh, ammunition are. Well, not necessarily ammunition, but upgrades. Also, uh, every now and then you'll encounter human beings and you want to save them immediately from the zombies. Uh, if, if you do it correctly, you will earn bonus health, which is critical, vital to your success in the game. Now, the bosses in the game are pretty difficult. Um, they all have their own patterns, and uh, it's mostly about trying to find that one critical spot to shoot them. Like It's not always obvious. It's not always like directly in the middle or some bulging red part. Now, there are different modes of play besides just your standard um, arcade story mode playthrough. You have a practice mode, you have a time trial. Um, the practice mode, you get to um, take turns on the bosses. 
So in other words, it's just a boss battle, and you get to play that over and over as many times as you want. It's really great for practice. But the game is very fast-paced and has loads of action. It's more action-oriented than uh, anything else. But it's a lot of fun, especially if you got two players. But you have to be amped for the game. You need energy to play this game. All right. There's a boss in House of the Dead 3. That's like a giant um, orangutan type of creature. And he is extremely difficult to beat because of the way that he moves. He climbs from he climbs across this fence kind of in a circular pattern. Um, and when he gets all the way to the other side, he automatically slashes at you and you take massive damage. But you, the hardest part is trying to shoot him while he's moving across because he moves at such like an irregular pattern. Um, it's just really hard because you've got a tiny crosshair that you're trying to keep. Well, you're trying to point that crosshair at him while he's moving. So you keep the crosshair a little bit in front of him, waiting for him to come to that position. But when he crosses his arms and, and moves from left to right, he um, skips such a large area. It's very unpredictable to land shots on him. That's one of the hardest bosses in this game. But the game is very straightforward and um, very satisfying if you like action games. Games that are fast paced, all about action. So I recommend that you give it a rental, try it out, and let me know what you think. Thanks.